Everyone, welcome to the Fantasy Baseball Experience podcast for Matchup 11. We have a special, special appearance here because uh, two co-managers on a team, both my cousins, huge week this week, 348 points currently with Sunday Night Baseball still going on. Uh, Hayden, you've been on the podcast before. Welcome back. Glad to see your face again. And Jared, we all know you're only here because it's Father's Day. There's no way your wife would have let you on the podcast anyway. <laughs> Welcome to your first time, Jared. How do you feel? Uh, you forgot to mention that 348 is the high for the season so far. Is it really? Other Maybe. than yeah. week one. Got to say week one. Well, of course, of course. Probably 400. 10 days. Wow. And yeah. we also had the other highest score, so. 337, so, you know. A lot of ebbs and flows from your team. I wouldn't say they're very consistent, but uh we're we're competing against ourselves at this point. Oh, okay. We're, no, we're not saying we're good. We're just saying we have to keep <laughs> scores. Gotcha, gotcha. Well we're just saying when our team puts it together, I mean it's just on. It yeah. it was a ridiculous week. The first thing I want to go over from y'all's team this week is your dynamic duo that I know you guys have just been banking all season. Eddie Rosario and Ozzy Albies. Well, they have 92 points this week. Dude, Ozzy's either trash or amazing, and he's just been amazing the past two weeks. So, I mean. Did another three-run bomb today, I saw. Yeah, I think they hit a home run every single day. They did. Eddie has four straight. Eddie had 51 this week. And how about my guy, Dub, wanted to stream him in this week. He said, yeah, Eddie's, he's been playing pretty good. He comes in and drops 51 as a streamer. I don't think he's a streamer. I think he might just be rosterable at this point. Dude, he's streaming the Braves lineup. Snicker doesn't even want to play him every game, but he had to this week. <laughs> Dude, I was watching last week. He was just barreling everything. And I was like, Dude, when Eddie gets hot, he gets hot. Let's do it. Uh, Let's and- not forget, 2019 for the Twins, Eddie had a 800 OPS for the whole season. Over 30 home runs. So he's a player. And he's got his <laughs> eyes fixed. Four years ago, man. Dude, he won the world freaking series. It's in there, man. It, that's still in you when it happens once. Last it's like Logan, years. man. He's probably never going to win another championship, but he's won one, so it's a possibility. Yeah, I feel you like that. Magic's still somewhere in the bag, always back in Right, there. yeah. Dude, Eddie has a slugging of 667 the last seven days. Dude's – he's playing ridiculous. Um, that was a great, great pickup. Yeah, and especially in a Braves fan-filled league, you think people like that usually go early. I mean, A.J. smith Shawyer has been up and down off wall for <laughs> right. two months in the minors. So how did Eddie get in? I mean, so that was my streamer. You want to know Jared's streamer of the week? Nolan Jones with a big old six points, maybe. I think it was yeah, that six. That sounds about right. Um, Jared, would you I really agree? liked him. I still liked him. Would you agree out of the two uh, managers here, you tend to always make the wrong decision for your team, or have you actually had some decent plays? I mean, I drafted Nico, and that's about as far as it goes. Um, otherwise, yeah, pretty eh. – To be I mean, fair, though. He told me to draft you, Darvish, over Zach Gallon, and that one biting us. That still hurts me. That does still hurt me. That should, but I guess – I would say y'all have a very high output team, not very consistent. So you got two of the top single week scores, 348 this week's astounding. And against poor Benson, man, that guy, he is on a skid and a half. He did not deserve that beat down this week. Um, The 348 points this week gets you to a commanding record of seven and four on the season. We'll get into our next segment later and I'll speak on y'all's behalf. So uh, y'all don't have to judge your own team, but are y'all the truth? I mean, you're kind of a chew in for the playoffs at seven and four, I think. How are you feeling about it? I mean, dude, the the American League's just easy money, dude. Absolute trash. We ran through them except for a fluke against Will. Yeah. I remember like week two when they had like three guys that were two and oh, and they were like, oh, the National League sucked. And they literally <laughs> they dude, did. They thought it was unbalanced. Dude, they're about to get run over by Kinsley. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. I mean, That's a bad side. If you look at their playoff percentages, bro. Mm, 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 well, mm. No. Look at ours. It's like 87, 87, 90. Yeah, because we're all moving on back to seven and four, baby, and they're all dropping. Big week for us. <laughs> so to cover, and we'll hit both leagues in this, 
I wanted to bring a new segment since the league's kind of at this balancing point now where half the league's over 500, half the league's underneath 500. And shout out to Kevin Sims. He sent us this beautiful spreadsheet. I'm going to share screens, let uh, people in the league see it. But he's taken all of their win total averages, moving averages, their average win scores, loss scores, and he's put that into the spreadsheet to create a true win and loss column. And we're going to kind of use that to navigate here. My first segment, I'm going to start with and share the screens. Zoom this one in. I'm going to call this gods or frauds. So this is going to be the five teams that are sitting at six and four right now in the league. And Hayden, I will let you start. The first on this list is Kevin. He's sitting at six and four. Um, how's this team doing this week? Let me pull it. I mean, he's squeaking out wins, but I want to call him a fraud. Uh, yeah, yeah. But since the beginning of the league, we've been talking about his team and how we don't like how it looks, but it's consistent. Yeah. I'm still going. He's really trusting his pitching. Yeah. He went ahead and picked up Gavin Williams. So let's see here on his spreadsheet. We got Kevin here, row six. He's showing a true record of six and four. His average win score is 299, average loss score of 209. There's not too big of a variation that compared to some of these. There's a lot of average loss scores in the 100s, which I think is alarming that you are continually putting up scores that low. So it's got him at an even over under, no change, and a true record of six and four, which he's at right now. So I think he's more than deserving to be that. I mean, I mean, can we talk about how the man has time to make this spreadsheet, but he can't accept or decline a trade within three days? Dude, I'm telling like he I was just let him sit. Him. The fact that he reached out to me about fantasy baseball amazed me because we <laughs> logged him on his transactions. If you look at it, guess who still has the least transactions in the league? Dude has like 10. I mean, why why even do anything if you're winning? I guess that's true. So we will move Kevin, I think, into the God section. Are we good with that? I mean, I, I voted fraud, but sure. I, I mean, I would lean it. You wanted to call him fraud, but you felt like he had to be a God. I mean, just based on principle, I'm still saying fraud. All right. <laughs> Kevin, okay, this is your show, baby. You're the weak winner. Get him in there. Kevin's <laughs> been labeled a he fraud. Is. I, I thought I was going to have his team this this spring, I thought I didn't think he was going to be back. I didn't even know he liked playing this. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe next year we'll have Mitchell's. That's what it looks like the way we're going. No, um, I don't want Mitchell's, next week. So he'll, Mitchell's a legend. <laughs> um, Jared, I'll give you the next one. I am the next team sitting at six and four. Great week for me. I'm at 280, about to beat Austin, moving to seven and four. Am I a god or am I a fraud, sir? Oh, man, it hurts. But I mean, you're a god. Dude, you know it. The judge he's, is on the IL and he's still getting wins. I mean, he's he's got a really good team top to bottom, and I just hate to say that so much. I will but he's say he's got pitching depth, he's got hitting, he got Arenado for free off the waivers. Oh, dude. Terrible. Dude, don't be <laughs> hitting while he's down this week. <laughs> I'm not. I'm saying it has nothing to do with Benton. Yeah, it does. Sonny Gray put up six points this week. Dude, he does it every week, man. <laughs> He's noodle arm, man. He only, he only lasts for one month every year. Yeah, it was a given that that was going to happen. Um, Ethan even yeah. texted us privately. I, I don't want to accept this trade because it's so unfair, but I mean, I just have to. I have <laughs> I to take it, this. man. It was like 6.30 <laughs> in the morning. I hadn't even taken a shower yet, and I was like, damn, this is a dramatic start to the day. <laughs> All right, uh, Hayden, I'll go back to you because I want to make sure I cover the all team, uh, keep any bias out of this. Mitchell, he's sitting at six and four. That's what he's doing this week. He is God. Gonna, he's going to win a game against Logan, but only 211 this week, not a big high score. So you're thinking Mitch is a fraud? No, God. Oh, God. Like, okay, I, I'm, I'm good with that. His team is Mitchell good. is the God. Yeah, dude, he front squats 315. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's Who a cares about his record. He's a god no matter what. He's a handsome guy. That's a fact. Yeah, and his team, if you look down it, I know it's not the super high scoring week, but consistent 25, 22, 12, 15, 15, 10, 20, 12, 27, 27, 24. That's a good, consistent team. I mean, the guy knows not knows baseball and he picks. He, has he does. He does. 
Think about two of his waiver pickups. He picked up Eovaldi off the waivers and Spencer Steer. Yeah. yeah. That's two of the best players in the league right now. He got them off waivers. Yeah, The dude just knows how to play. I agree. And the Matt Olsen play, like, dude's playing ball. And as Braves fans, we all love Matt Olsen. And it hurts that he's on Mitchell's team. I, I can I know me, Kevin, Benton, Logan. We're itching to have that Matt Olsen in our life, but we don't right now. So I, I like Mitchell being in the God spot as well. Just a consistent team. Uh, I don't think he's done anything crazy. He's only been on top scoring pod once, but he's got what it takes to take a deep run. That's going to move to y'all, and I'll cover y'all. So – We'll Just go back to the sheet. The broad. Look, we're going to go back to the sheet for this one because y'all's average. So we know the you sheet. got two of the top scores at posted, right? I understand you guys can ball out. And your average loss score of 244, I feel like is really high. That's a tough loss. But the average win of 232 is not it. Like, I understand Ooh. you put 350 this week. But 230 is not going to win a bunch of games for you, man. You're, pay- you're playing weak opponents, and Kevin's beautiful spreadsheet has y'all's true record at three and seven. Fantasy's not about the numbers, man. It's about the feeling week to week. Dude, three and it's seven. It's a feel. Three, it is a feel. Yeah, that's why we picked up Eddie. That's why we picked up Eddie. Let me let me go through y'all's uh, lineup real quick here, the old Lehigh Valley Iron Pig. So you, I, I'm not going to fully trust Kevin's spreadsheet, so I'll walk through it. I mean, I prefer you put us in the frauds. That's okay. We need some uh, locker room material. I mean, the lineup? Stout. Ozzy can play. We know Goldschmidt should probably be performing better. Nico's been a top dog. Kyle Tucker, he needs to get some batting gloves. Nolan Jones, top prospect. He's been wearing them. Is he? Is he wearing gloves? Yeah. Yep. Damn, dude. Estuary Reeves, that's a joke. Figure that out, bud. What? Yeah, get that. Two three bases a game. Get that out of here. If he gets a single, it's worth three points. The pitching staff's a little weak. It's not deep enough. Like, you can't lean on Giolito being your bench spot guy. You need to have a better rotation that. So your pitching staff's weak, Mm. but the lineup's solid. Kevin thinks you'll also be three and seven, but I think you guys are a god. Dude, do that to us. Oh, <laughs> Dude. oh, oh man. it's a feel. It's see? It's a for feel. the ages right here, man. That's it. I hope you guys tank after that. But uh, Jared, that'll leave you the honors with, I think we all know where this guy's going. Six and four, taking a tough loss this week. What do you see in Benton's team, God or a fraud? If we look at Kevin's uh, lineup, also has Benton sitting at a true score of three and seven. He just does not have what it takes. I mean, this hurts me, man. It really hurts me. If you look at his lineup, there's just there's just nothing there, you know. Just it's tough. But he's got a championship pedigree. You can't discount that. He has a trophy sitting on his dresser right now that he kisses every single morning when he wakes up and puts on his shower cap. <laughs> and he's also he's won the championship in every sport. So I do trust him. But if I look at his roster, I'm going to have to go fraud. I mean, I, I think he's fraudulent in baseball this year. But, but he is I, a champion. I do 100% respect you letting it be known. He is the only triple crown winner. He, he is, has he is. the baseball and basketball, counts. That, that and counts. basketball trophy, man. So that's a big deal. Benton, I'm sorry to see you move into the fraudulent category. I didn't you, want to do it. You, but I mean, you did. He's got a nice strategy with his, like, SPRPs. Like, he had, like, 20 starts against us this week. Like, he was in it the whole week. They just all suck. <laughs> yeah, he did it against <laughs> me, too. The guy literally had, like, 16 starts and lost to my, like, eight. It, he's taking a quantity over quality approach that's not panning out this year. Dane yeah. Dunning does not count as a start. He goes minus three every week. Yeah, you got to get rid of Dane. Dane's got to go, man. Well, that is going to move us into the – Players that are all sitting in at five and five or four and six heading into this week, the caps are the craps. Um, so are these players capping with their bad score and they're going to come back and make a playoff push or are they actually crap? We're going to start with Austin at four and six with the fake five and five midweek. I had to deal with hey, uh, back to the hey, four Ethan, and six. real quick. Can you explain to me what cap is? 
Uh, so for those people over, how are you? Thirty four now, dude. Yeah, thirty thirty three. Father of two, just put him to bed. Yeah, your hairline looks like you're about fifty three, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Don't show well that. Played. <laughs> that's gonna get us kicked off YouTube. Uh, if you're capping, <laughs> you're like, that's like you're lying, like you're faking it. Like, come on, you capping, man. Like Austin's at four and six. Come on, you're capping. You're not four and six. You should be six. I got you. Four. I got it. Yeah. So Hayden, we'll go back to you. What do you think about Austin? Is he capping at four and six, or is he actually crap? Uh, he's capping. He he knows baseball. He'll turn it around. Dude knows ball. I mean, he scored two fifty on me this week. Uh, squeaked out a win. Otani balled, but didn't happen. I mean, yeah. Can Otani, I just McClanahan? He's what lost four straight. How uh, he's he's toast. Yeah, but you just feel he's going to turn it around. It I have. I do not have that feeling at all. I think he's dude, done. He's dude, if you go to the soul. spreadsheet, listen to me. We're on the spreadsheet. I love the guy. Dude, Austin row five. Sitting at four and six, the highest average win score in the league with a true record of seven and three. That is the most cap. This guy's got to be up in there. I'm just saying, if I see Austin on our schedule, I don't get too worried. Let's just say that. Dude, don't, don't ruin really no, it for us. If he's the eight seed in the playoffs, he's making a run. Okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Just like football, he was the eight seed. He made the finals. I don't <laughs> doubt that. Oof. Um, does that mean I get to go to my own lovely wife, Kinsley? Yeah, you got to do it. I can do that. Cap or crap on Kinsley. Let's be- take a peek at Kevin's sheet real quick. He gives her one more win than she has. An average win score of 296 is third in the league. Five and five. She's I don't have a two-game win streak, right? She is. Has she made any improvements to her starting pitching, though? Logan Webb. Mm. Montgomery, Logan Webb, down and away. Holder, Holy pitch. Braxton Garrett, Domingo Herman, a hurt Nestor Cortez, Logan Allen, Kyle Gibson, a hurt Eduardo Rodriguez. She's crap, dude. Straight crap. That that pitching <laughs> rotation is not making a playoff push. Who needs Hurst. pitching, dude? You got Freddie and Altuve. I I don't. Bo, it's a solid Bo? lineup, dude. Have you guys ever kept up with baseball? Pitching wins championships. Our pitching sucked this week, and we put up like 400 points. That's why you guys are frauds. Well, I, I did put you in God's book. Yeah, put us back in fraud. Nah, dude, I can't do that to you. I'm jinxing y'all from God from the reverse way. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to take it too hard on Kinsley. She gets ragdolled every week. Speaking of ragdoll, this guy's roster is vanished. Uh, Jared, what do you think about Alex? Is he actually crap, or is he just capping? He's complete crap. Um to be honest, I think this is going to be a good thing for Alex because he. I feel like he's always a top seed. He's just – the pressure of not winning a championship has to be so heavy on him. I think now that he's going to be totally forgotten for the rest of the year and probably for a very long time, he can he can just sneak up on us in football next year and maybe win the championship. But as far as baseball, his season's over. He doesn't need to check the app anymore and just start Dude. pre-drafting, uh, getting ready for football. He put up a good run this week. Listen. Oh I, yeah. I don't think we can counter Jared's arguments there. I think we just need to move Alex into the crap. There's no way he still watches these podcasts at this point, right? Oh, no chance. Yeah. I mean, it's a slam dunk. He knows it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'll move you to uh the beloved Brady, the guy everyone expected to kill it, but he's sitting down here at four and six. But he's on a run. His team's looking solid. Oh, yeah. Is uh, he uh, four and six? Five That's and six after this week. You said he's a big cap. Oh yeah. Hmm. So, you, how much potential do you see out of his team? Are you thinking he just makes playoffs, or is it going to get hairy for us? He's going to make the playoffs, and he's going to do some absolute trash trade and get some god batter for some nobody pitcher, and he's gonna he's gonna be a contender, dude. And he drops Gunnar Henderson. And then Gunnar Henderson pops off, and he gets back on Brady's team before anybody else can roster him. He Scum. did. Same with Matt McClain. You probably texted him and were like, dude, you're not going to pick up Gunner again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he does love Brady, man. He does love him. If he can't have him, he, he wants Brady to win over Kinsley. Oh, for sure, dude. Over his own blood. His own. <laughs> what do you think his average roster age is? It's got to be like 23. 
Uh, Joe Vargas, Garcia, Gunnar Henderson, Ellie De La Cruz, Julio Rodriguez, Fernando Tatis, Luis Robert, Cattell Marte, Matt McLean, Michael Harris, Jordan Walker. Yeah. And then you get to his pitchers, average age 40. Yeah. So it's like 33. Yeah. Is Dylan Cease, uh, he's actually played for Brady yet, or is Brady just kind of benching him? I don't think he's played. Yeah. I mean, he's been, I mean, he's putting up 15 every time, but. Yeah, I'll take him. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna get Ellie De La Cruz from Brady. I know he wants to sell high on that man. Hey, can we just mention that Alex dropped Arcia so that Brady could pick him up? We're talking about an all star. Brady picked him up a week ago. Yeah. Alex why how is he dropping a healthy player? <laughs> That's a good point. I, I didn't know way make this like a bash Alex him. podcast, but I just wanted to point that out that he dropped Orlando Arcia. Look, like you said, there's no way he's still tuning into these, so I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Uh, <laughs> I guess that means I'll handle Logan, former roommate of mine, Balls Deep, Richburg. Mm, I need to check out old Kevin's spreadsheet for this one because Logan, he scored a lot of points this year. Yeah, yeah he's a tricky Kevin, one. Kevin's spreadsheet says this is true. True record should be 7-3. and three. Logan is capping, all right? He's got a legit team. This dude's in the playoffs. We got to watch out for him. He's consistent. He scores high. Low week this week. He might be the lowest guy this week, but I think it's a fraudulent low, and he's capping. Yeah, Alvarez, Jordan's out. Yeah, so I respect it. Uh, Jared, cover Will Sayers for me. Oh, man. You know what? think he's cap I, I mean I almost want to put him in crap because it's will he's gonna do something to miss the playoffs because that's what he does but his his team's okay they're not bad so I'll put but him in cap. Day, he's at five and five in the playoffs and he's like you know I feel like if I miss out on the playoffs I'm definitely gonna get my money back this year like that's, yeah, that's a terrible mindset terrible Dude, mindset he loves ninth place so where are you gonna put him you think he's capping I think he is, but if I'm on this podcast in a month, uh, I'm just going to, between the legs, lay up in the crap shoot, you know? What does that mean? Where do you want me to move? <laughs> <laughs> He's capped for now. All right, all right. We got him seeing push. Hayden, that means you get to end it with your best friend, Cody Pemberton. You got to see him today. You saw that bright smiley have in his face. Is the <laughs> team uh, at 5-5 five and five going to make a push, or is he going to end up in the toilet bowl? Yeah, he's toilet bowl. I'm sorry. Mm. I mean, you just can't roster that many Cardinals players. Dude, he's got three Cardinals second basemen on his bench. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> We're running out of time. He's he's in the crap. <laughs> just move yeah, on. Yeah, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. All right. <laughs> that does it for the fact or crap portion of the podcast. I'll get the uh, screen share out here. We're going to end it. I want you guys. We're just going to go down the list here. Do it quick. We've done a deep dive into every team. So I want y'all to lay out the fantasy landscape um, of the one through 12 power rankings. So Hayden, do you want to start from the top and go down? You do the top six. Jared does seven through 12. Uh, yeah, I guess. All right, well, let's do it, Hayden. You get to start things off. Who's the best team in the league? I'm just going to give it to Kevin for now because I don't know who else to put up there. What? That's a gross start to this power rankings, but it's okay. I mean, wow. Oh, we, we, because we play him next week. I see what you're doing. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, got you. The jinx from God. Who you got at number two? Uh, I'll put you at number two. I mean, if you're winning without Judge, then – that's impressive. Dude, that I know you're my cousin and all, but that was a beautiful thing. I, would, I mean, I prefer to put you at 12, honestly, but, <laughs> Me too, gonna, but this is a respectable podcast. I got to be truthful. All right. Number three, then. Number three, I'll put uh, Logan. That's He's at four and six, though, right? That's a long way. What? Right. So I got to take Logan off my bottoms list. I can't Ooh. pick him now. Logan is the number two point scorer in the league, to be fair. So, yeah, I mean, he's got a dangerous team. If he's caught, if we're coming up against Logan, I'm scared. Yeah, it's definitely a podcast you're trying to stream some pictures on. We yeah. did come up against Logan last week, and 
saw how it turned out. Dude, we barely beat him. <laughs> we beat him by eight. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. Who you got at number four then, Hayden? Uh, number four, I will put uh, us. Okay, gotcha. I, I mean, look. There's someone eight. missing, and he's already to number five. This is strange. I'm ready to see who if he makes Hayden's number five spot. What's next? Uh, it's got to be Mitchell. Is that who you were thinking of? Yeah, number five. That seems really low. Yeah, I don't want to jinx the guy. I mean, I respect him. He has him. the ninth most points in the league. What do you think he needs to be in the top for? I mean, he's my number one. He squeaked out Brady for most more points right now. I mean, he's not like he's performing great. I'm okay with him being a top. I like him Mitchell's team, but for you to be like, oh, he needs to be a top guy, get out of here. All right. So, hey, your last pick to round out the top six is going to be? Uh, ooh. Are you doing this off the top of your dome right now? It's impressive. Yeah, who, who do I got left? Can you cut a lamp on in there, by the way? You look like Batman. Yeah, I wish. I'd, I'd have to walk <laughs> away for a second. <laughs> uh I'm putting uh I'm gonna keep it National League and we'll put Brady. That's fair. Yeah, Brady's moving up, man. He got shit on as the twelfth team for way too long on this podcast. And now he's back up to number six. Jared, we're gonna move to you for the seven spot. I just want to say uh before I start, I did have Brady as the number four if I were gonna start this week. So I think Brady has a really good team. So I am on number seven. Yes, sir. I'm going to go with Benton. He, he, like I said, championship pedigree. We should have talked about this, huh? Dude, I told y'all to discuss this beforehand. We we just called this guy a fraud, and now he's the seven spot. That's because eight through 12 is trash. I mean, Dude, I I they have never seven. won a championship like Benton, and they don't have good teams. So if I have to, you know, they're, they don't have anything. Benton at least has a championship background. All right. Well, we'll get there then. Let's listen to your eight through 12 teams that you think just cannot hang with his championship pedigree. Number eight, I'm going to have to give to Will. Okay. I, I think he average, average team, job. solid. And so now moving to your nine, these are going to be your four teams missing out on the playoffs here. So really think on it. I mean, these, there's not much to think about. These are the teams that don't matter at all that are probably hoping for the all-star break so there's no more baseball on at number nine i'm gonna give it to kinsley i, th I think she has a solid lineup her pitching eh, but solid lineup number nine number 10 i'm gonna go pimbo i, I just love his pitching you don't I mean, love that's an upgrade well i mean you, we're talking about the bottom four i mean Love might be a strong word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Decent. And number 11, I'm going to give it to the man that has lost four straight, the longest losing streak on the season so far, and that is Austin Shipman at number 11. That's... Number 12, I don't want to spend any more time on this guy because I feel like I've been bashing him, and I actually yeah. really like this guy every time I've met him. And it's going to be Alex. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, dude. Your monologues on this podcast have been so anti-Alex. It's aggressive. I, I know. <laughs> I, I, just, I don't want it to come off that way because I really do like Alex. But I think just the pressure of never having won a title has gotten to him being the top seed all the time. He's yeah. so fair. He knows. He finally caved in. I That power rank's a little all over the place for me. I'm not going to lie. But... You guys were the matchup winners. You get to lay down the power rankings. I'm just here to click buttons and smile. So, I mean, who would you put at number one? Anyone could be number one. No, I'm I'm not yeah. mad about number one as much. I think Austin's way too low. Um, I mean, how can you? I mean, L four, dude. L four, and you think he's too low? What can I do with L four? They're bad losses, though, dude. The last two weeks he lost by two points combined, and this week he caught me scoring two eighty something. He can't do anything about it. He's getting shafted. But eventually, you keep saying, "Oh, he's so unlucky, he's so unlucky," and then boom, all of a sudden he's out of the playoffs. I mean, if you're unlucky for a season, you're unlucky. There are two games separating the best team in the league from the worst team in the league. You're not going to be out of playoff talks for another month. I mean, are you? Just the way it's trending, though. That's what I'm saying. He has the fourth most points in the league. So. Sometimes you run into bad luck. Look, 
look, hey, like I said, y'all get to lay down the power rankings. That's all we got time for. I'm so glad my two cousins got to join me today. If y'all are wondering why I'm an asshole, it's because these two guys popcorned me off trampolines until I just didn't want to get on trampolines anymore. That's a fact. But, I mean, happy Father's Day, Jared. I hope you got to enjoy it with your kids. Hayden, this is your last Father's Day without being an official father, so that's exciting, too. Um, I appreciated the camaraderie on the podcast. I like you two, one, two, and back and forth, but that's all we got time for today, boys. I appreciate it. See you, boys. <laughs>